You don't really know much about Halloween. everybody and welcome back to another unboxing video. This one is a little bit unplanned. Uh, first of all, I'd like to point out my fantastic TerraVision subscriber shirt. Um, but I saw on uh, one of my many boutique Blu-ray groups that uh, Powerhouse Indicator was having a sale. I was like, oh, I'll go see what's there because I recently fallen in love with their content. And um, th the prices were insanely low considering they're based out of the UK. So I got a nice big box from all the way from the UK, um, full of goodies, and it came here really fast. So indicator slash powerhouse. Yeah. Um, I found them when I got uh, a couple different things, but the one that really sold it for me was the Todd Slaughter um, box set that came out, and I burned through that thing front to back. Everything on it was perfect. It was fantastic, and I'm now, you know. A fan. So in the box, along with the, the films I got, I got this handy dandy nice little catalog, which in this day and age, you know, printed catalogs are kind of few and far between. If you're a person of my age, you remember back in the day when you get the catalog for Christmas from JCPenney or someplace, and you would go through it, and that was kind of the, the fun of the holiday season. There you go. You can relive those days. So um, let's just get right into it. First thing we've got here is Night of the Demon, aka Curse of the Demon. None of these have been opened yet, by the way, so I apologize if you want to see inside. Uh, this is from 1957. Uh, this is directed by Jacques Tournier. Tournier? That sounds good, right? Uh, who did Cat People and I Walked with a Zombie, just to name a couple. Um, I'm not sure about the people in this yet, like who stars in it. I didn't recognize any of the names, so I'm going to have to uh, do a little research as I go. But this is a uh, about an American professor, John Holden, who arrives in London for a parapsychology conference only to find himself investigating the mysterious actions of a devil worshiping Julian Carswell. Uh, you know, typical kind of traveling abroad sort of situation. Um, and the interesting thing about this movie, aside from the fact that it's kind of a classic and you'll see this image a lot on uh, like classic horror movie books, uh, is that originally this monster was not supposed to be shown in the film. Uh, but the studio added it in post-production, uh, didn't tell the director, and he was pretty upset about it. So, just a fun little fact there. It's kind of a cool monster design, but it was not intended to be seen. So if, if any of you know me, uh, like my lovely wife who's sitting right there does, uh, they know I'm a, a Mia Farrow fan. And so I couldn't pass up Sea No Evil from 1971. I've never seen this movie, um, and anything from the like era of anything in the 70s, 60s for her is kind of you know peak. Um, she's still acting today, and it's fantastic. But <clears throat> this is about a young blind woman who is pursued by a maniac while staying with her family in a country manor. I, you've seen that story before, but have you ever seen it with her? I don't think so, unless you've already seen this movie. Uh, this is directed by Richard Fleischer, who did Soylent Green, which is People. Uh, Mr. Majestic, which is a Charles Bronson movie, who is, you know, the best. Uh, Conan the Destroyer and the uh, spinoff Red Sonja. So... Couldn't go wrong. And you've got Mia Farrow in the lead, who Rosemary's Baby, and then all the Woody Allen films and just, you know, just a huge filmography. Um, and an interesting fact about this, during the opening credits, the killer is watching a TV clip of Torture Garden, which is also in this box. So not that that has anything to do with the film itself, but it's in the box. So now we have Satan's Slave from 1976. And you'll notice most of these all kind of have a similar backing because uh, uh, Powerhouse slash Indicator uh, has a very distinct design, like the the color ribbons around the the uh, upper or lower part of it, and then you know they're very similar in design. Um, this is about a woman who is traveling with her parents to her uncle's uh, house, and then crashes, and her parents die, but she survives. Uh, she stays with her uncle, but it becomes clear that he and his son are planning something sinister for her, which I assume has something to do with Satan, perhaps. Um, this is directed by Norman J. Warren, who uh, did Terror 
and Prey, which uh, I, I just recently picked up in a prior video. Uh, he did Bloody New Year, which um, my wife and I are huge fans of New Year's Evil, but Bloody New Year, not so much. So I'm a little wary, but I, I'm curious uh, because he also did Inseminoid, which is kind of a uh, exhibition classic, and that one is in the box. I've never seen it, but I couldn't resist it. Uh, the stars one Michael Go, which um, I forgot to put his credits on here, but you might recognize the name. Um, so anyway, we're going to move on from that one. Speaking of Torture Garden, uh, <laughs> Torture Garden, which was recently reviewed on one of my recent favorite uh, channels, the Cobwebs channel with Daniel, who's from my hometown and uh, has a very similar taste to mine. I think we'd be good friends. That sounded weird, didn't it? Uh, anyway, this is from 1967. It's an anthology film. Uh, four short horror stories about people who visit Dr. Diablo's fairground haunted house attraction. Um, and if I remember correctly, yep, this is an Amicus production, which uh, Laura and I have been recently doing a dive into the Amicus films, like Dr. Terror's uh, House of Horrors and uh, Vault of Terror and uh, Tales from the Crypt. Uh, so, you know, how could I not resist this? This is done by Freddie Francis, who did Tales from the Crypt, Day of the Triffids, Dr. Terror's House of Horrors, just recently what I just mentioned. Uh, it stars Jack Palance, who you may remember from City Slickers. Uh, shame! And then a film that I saw in college that I did not realize what it was called until recently, Praise, which I really want to pick it up at some point because I have this fond memory of it in college. I'm wondering if it really was as interesting as I thought I saw it on TV one night. Uh, Burgess Meredith is also in this from the Rocky films, Clash of the Titans, Grumpy Old Men, and Peter Cushing from Star Wars, Shockwaves, Doctor Who and the Daleks, Doctor Who Invasion Earth, uh, 2150 AD. And uh, despite being top billed and present from the opening, Jack Pellance doesn't speak a line of dialogue in this film until one hour and 15 minutes in, and the film is a total of 100 minutes. Well, 93 minutes, depending on which cut you watch. So uh, I've not heard the best things about the film itself, but I like Amicus. I, we love anthology films, so done deal. Uh, now we have The Tingler, which uh, if you ever check out our show, Dollar Show Drive, and it is viewable on Tingler Television. Check out tinglertelevision.com for more information or thenewlyduds.com. I'll put the information up here and in the uh, description. Anyway, uh, this is from 1959, uh, directed by William Castle, who was the master of uh, selling, you know, kitschy kind of uh, themed films. Uh, so he also did Straight Jacket, which has got one of my favorite posters, um, 13 Ghosts, which is in the box, and House on Haunted Hill, Hill which uh, I think everybody's probably seen at least once. Uh, this is about an obsessed pathologist who discovers a, and captures a parasitic creature that grows when fear grips its host. Uh, stars Vincent Price uh, from The Last Man on Earth, The Fly, Edward Scissorhands, and um, when this film was in the theaters, William Castle, always the showman, uh, put buzzers in the select seats to coincide with the appearance of the tingler. So people got a little tingle when they were on the screen. So they would then get shocked, literally and uh, figuratively. Um, this one is one that I'm really excited about. And there's been, uh, TerraVision has also done this recently. Um, and uh, even Vinegar Syndrome. But uh, this is The Phantom of the Monastery, which is a film that people have not seen and heard about, um, may not have even known existed for a long time. It's from 1934. Um, it is directed by Fernando de Fuentes, who uh, did Godfather Mendoza and Let's Go with Pancho Villa. Um, this is a very, like, um, it's a very, very early uh, Spanish horror film. And... It uh, is about Alfonso and Eduardo and his wife who get lost when visiting a forest. Uh, a strange monk finds them, takes them to an ancient covenant. Uh, their three amigos suffer personality changes, especially Christina, who tries to seduce Alfonso uh, in a strange coincidence to a story uh, told by an old monk. And after some efforts to escape, Alfonso is trapped inside a jail and more strange and macabre things start to happen. So this is a curiosity um, that I've heard a lot of interesting things about. So I'm excited to, to check it out and add it to the collection because, you know, I, I like to be a, a film preservationist and something that uh, needs to be preserved. Next up, we have probably my favorite actor um, for a long time. I don't know if I'd still put him there. Probably he's still in my top five, uh, Jack Nicholson. This is at his peak of his powers in 1973. This is the last detail. Uh, which is about two Navy men who are ordered to bring a young offender who is also a Navy man 
to prison, uh, but decided to show him one last good time along the way, which originally when this came out, it didn't do well. Um, and so they rebranded it as a comedy and put it back out and it did much better, but um, uh, it's not really a comedy. Um, it was directed by Hal Ashby, who did Harold and Maude. Everybody knows that movie. Uh, Being There and Coming Home, all you know, movies that people talk about a lot. Uh, it stars one Jack Nicholson, obviously from The Shining, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Batman, uh, Otis Young, who was in Blood Beach, Hollywood Nights, The Capture of Bigfoot. Those are two separate movies, if, in case you don't know. And then Randy Quaid uh, from Christmas Vacation, Independence Day, Freaked. Um, and he plays the captive that I won't give him too much away. It's just something you need to see. It probably would pair very well with uh, Midnight Cowboy. Anyway, uh, apparently Jack Nicholson turned down the role of Johnny Hooker in The Sting from 1973, which he thought was too commercial to appear in this film, uh, which was written by his good friend Robert Town. So just a little, little interesting fact for you. Now we have The Devil's Men from 1976. Uh, tourists are kidnapped by a devil-worshipping cult, and a priest tries desperately to save them. A gruesome tale of the devil and human sacrifice or summer vacation. Um, this was directed by Costas Karagianis, um, who has done just a crap ton of Greek films, just like very prolific director. Uh, this stars one Donald Pleasance from Halloween, The Freak Maker, You Only Live Twice, and uh, apparently I shot him six times. I always got to do that because my wife likes to let me do that. Um, P and Peter Cushing, who is in Horror Express, Horror of Dracula, Curse of Frankenstein, see a trend there. Um, and apparently Donald Pleasance only agreed to do this film so he could play something other than a villain, because in this movie he plays a priest, personally. Um, and I took this away too soon. The next movie is another uh, film that is uh, I've heard a lot about, but um, I'm very curious, uh, La Llorona, which is from 1933. This is, um, as far as I know, the first uh, version of the La Llorona tale on, that was filmed, um, which if you're not familiar with it, uh, a woman neglected by her husband that pays more attention to the two sons that she, uh, than, than, she than to her, um, then what she does out of basically, you know, anger and, and frustration is she drowns the two kids. She then kills herself, but couldn't escape the horrors of what she did. So she's trapped between kind of life and death and she cries out for her children in the night. And as a ghost, she searches for her sons that she drowned, unable to escape from Earth uh, or to heaven until she finds them, which there's been a ton of versions of this story. Uh, there was one even not that long ago, less than 10 years ago. Um, it's recently had a resurgence in popular culture, not just um, in Mexico. So this was directed by Raymond Pion, uh, who I need to learn some more about because I don't know anything about him. Same thing with the actors and actresses that were in this film. Uh, this was the first film that was released in 1932 in Mexico. Um, this was one of 21 sound films produced in 1933 in Mexico. Uh, it's not just the first horror film of, of the crying woman, La Llorona, um, but it's also Mexico's first horror film, supposedly. Uh, I'm sorry, this was the first sound film uh, released in 1932. Not the first film ever. They had, they had a silent film. Okay, so I mentioned Inseminoid, which is kind of the classic exhibition film. A little concerned about this, but uh, it's from 1981. Um, a crew of interplanetary, ar interplanetary archaeologists uh, are threatened when an alien creature impregnates one of their members, uh, causing her to turn homicidal and murder them one by one. Sounds like somebody's weird fan fiction. Uh, anyway, this is also directed by Norman J. Warren that I mentioned earlier. Uh, Bloody New Year, Terror. Ray, Satan's Slave. Uh, this stars Stephanie Beecham, who was in Rap Grandma, uh, and now The Screaming Starts, which is on the shelf, and Dracula AD 1972, the Hammer film, and Judy Geeson, who was in The Lords of Salem, 31, a couple of Rob Zombie, and Berserk, which is also in the list here, or in the box here. Uh, the script for this was written uh, in four days because the director, Norman J. Warren, had financial backers and no screenplay. Uh, the film was shot in four weeks. So, I, who knows where things come from. Uh, the next one is another kind of exploitation classic in the vein of like Taxi Driver. Uh, we have Hardcore from 1979. Um, a religious businessman from Michigan has to venture into the world of pornography in California, desperately searching for his runaway teenage daughter, uh, directed by Paul Schrader, who did Cat People, 
uh, touch and autofocus. Um, and this stars one George C. Scott from The Changeling, uh, The Exorcist 3, and he played uh, Patton. Uh, Peter Boyle is in this uh, from Taxi Driver, incidentally. Uh, Young Frankenstein and my favorite X-Files episode, the uh, Clyde Brucker's Last Repose, which if you've never seen it, it's fantastic. Um, so in this, uh, George C. Scott and director Paul Schrader did not get along. So much so that at one point, uh, Scott refused to come out of his trailer and threatened to quit the film. Uh, Scott only agreed to come back out after forcing Schrader to promise that he would never direct again, which uh, Schrader went back on that promise. And in case you missed some of the titles that I mentioned, we're all way past this. Um, now we have Slasher Time, Happy Birthday to Me from 1981. Uh, at the snobby Crawford Academy, Virginia's group of friends start to go missing years after horrible events that happened to her as a child around her birthday. Um, this is directed by J. Lee Thompson, who did Conquest of the Planet of the Apes, the best of the original Apes franchise, Ten to Midnight, and Death Wish 4, both Charles Bronson movies, did several Charles Bronson films. Uh, this stars one Melissa Sue Anderson from Little House on the Prairie and lots and lots of TV. That was kind of the selling point here, because she was a kind of good girl, and here she was doing a horror film. Uh, and interesting thing about this, the brain surgery that's performed in this film is done by a real neurosurgeon on a fake brain. I don't know why they just didn't get a real brain from somewhere. Weird. Um, I've been trying to get all of the Stephen King films, uh, so uh, I couldn't pass up the opportunity to pick up Christine from 1983. I haven't seen this one in a while. Uh, a nerdish boy buys a strange car with an evil mind of its own, and his nature starts to change to reflect it. Uh, this is directed by John Carpenter, who did Escape from New York, Salt on Precinct 13, Halloween, uh, stars Alexandra Paul uh, from Dragnet, Baywatch and Cuffs, uh, Harry Dean Stanton from Repo Man, Alien, The Green Mile, and just about every other uh, odd character actor needed film that is out there from the 70s, 80s, 90s. Um, at this point, Stephen King's popularity was uh, so high when the film went into production that uh, it was started before the book was even published. So they knew the book was, you know, going to be ripe for. Um, making money, and so they started production before it was even out to the public. Uh, now we have one that I actually already own that I didn't realize at the time, but it's okay because I need to start building up my collection, and you can't pass up uh, a Charles Bronson film. So we've got Breakout from 1975, um, where a Bush pilot is hired for $50,000 to go to Mexico to free an innocent prisoner. Um, this was directed by Tom Grise, who did lots and lots of TVs and movies. Um, and stars one Charles Bronson from Death Wish, The Great Escape, The Magnificent Seven, and a hundred other films. Uh, Robert Duvall is in this from The Godfather, Sling Blade, Falling Down, and Jill Ireland, uh, Charles Bronson's wife. Um, from She was in Death Wish 2, Hard Times, Assassination, where he uh, shoots a rocket launcher off the back of a motorcycle, if you can believe it. It happened. Um, so because this movie was based on a real-life prison escape in Mexico, the Mexican government would not permit the movie to be filmed there. Why? Um, we're almost done. We've got two more left. Uh, next up, we have Berserk, which I, I love Joan Crawford, so I couldn't pass uh, the 1967 film, uh, where a scheming circus owner finds her uh, authority challenged when a vicious killer targets the show. Uh, this was directed by Jim O'Conley, who did The Valley of Guanji, which, classic, uh, Tower of Evil and Smokescreen. Uh, the stars, like I said, one Joan Crawford from Whatever Happened to Baby Jane, Straight Jacket, and she plays Daisy Kenyon in Daisy Kenyon. Weird, right? Um, <laughs> the trivia on this, uh, Joan Crawford was early on the set every day and made breakfast for some of the crew members. I don't know if that's true or not, but I kind of want it to be because uh, it's just a fun fact. And finally, to close out this giant box of fun, we have... 13 Ghosts from 1960, uh, where a family inherits what uh, proves to be a haunted house, but a special pair of goggles allows them to see their ghostly tormentors. Again, William Castle directed this, who uh, did The Old Dark House. I saw what you did. Uh, Mr. Sardonicus, Zatz, um, just a real showman. Uh, this stars Margaret Hamilton, who you may recognize from The Wizard of Oz, uh, Brewster McCloud, Nothing Scared, I'm sorry, Nothing Sacred. And um, Shadrach, in this film, the headless lion tamer's ghost, was performed by Zamba's real-life trainer, Ralph Helfer. So Zamba is the, the lion, he's the tamer, so they just were like, hey, we need a lion tamer? There you 
we go. So if you see that indicators having a sale, aka powerhouse films, number one, prices were excellent. Um, they had a deal as on top of the things being on sale. So there was both the sale and the deal. Um, they had some things that were region B, so you have to be careful with what you buy. But if they have a sale, I would highly recommend checking it out. I believe at this point it is over. Um, but like I said, fast shipping, super inexpensive, great titles, all the stuff that I've seen from them. And I have a, several of their box sets on the shelves. This is the first time I have any of their single releases are just perfect transfers, great extra features, nice boxes, just really one of the, the best boutique blue, lab, blue labels, blue ray labels out there. I'm getting hungry. So I'm losing my, my speech here anyway. So, uh, if you'd like to check out any of our other videos, uh, check around. There's a bunch on here on the YouTube channel. Uh, you can also go to thenewlyduds.com. That is where everything that uh, is Newly Duds related is available. You can go there for your one-stop shop to find anything that's going on with us. Um, and uh, if you get a chance here in May, we are going to be at Wolf Hollow for the Summerween event where we'll be uh, selling our artwork as well as stickers and buttons. Come say hi to us. So we're going to have exclusive stickers that are going to be available that Mrs. Newly Dead and I made. They will only be available at the show as well as a poster that we've designed specifically for uh, the show that is a limited edition. So if you'd like to pick one of those up, um, we'll even sign it for you if you want. And uh, just come out and say hello. So on that note, I'm Joel. This has been another unboxing video. And uh, keep in mind that tomorrow is not guaranteed. So don't forget to unbox your heart. See you next time. Every time you see between the real and the unreal, the dead might be looking at Halloween, the festival of Sauron. Happy Halloween.